No. Uh, the joy of being a Christian has a lot to do with the fact that uh, we know no matter what happens in life, once we believe in Christ, we're going to have eternal happiness forever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. Jesus is forever is a topic, brothers and sisters. He is called the firstborn among all brothers. And we are his brethren, his sistren. We are one with him. And once we live in him, it is forever and ever and ever. We find, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there really is no other way. The way is the journey through life. We go through life, and we're accompanied by Christ. Or rather, he leads us on the way. And we, are, we say, Lord, each day, show me what you will. Tell me where to go. Tell me what to do. You just lead me, Lord. And like a child, we hold his hand and we let ourselves be led. <clears throat> he will never, ever deceive us. Even if we make mistakes, brothers and sisters, sometimes we're misguided, sometimes our own will gets in the way but we come back. Once we seek the will of God, we will find it. There is no such thing as seeking the will of God and not finding it. Why? Because he has told us, I will be faithful to you all the days of my life. He will be with us. He is the truth. There is no deceit, there is no guile in him. He will tell us the truth about ourselves, tell us about the truth about life, tell us about the truth of what we must be in order to become holy men and holy women. And thirdly, he is the life. He gives life. Even for those of us who die early, he gives life because we do not believe that life ends here. And so Jesus is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. The kingdom of God is what we are here to establish, brothers and sisters. And 
it must be established so that people will know that there is another way other than the way of the world. <clears throat> there is a king and yet a servant. It's a paradox, no? Uh, he is the king, he is a servant. He washes our feet, he wears a he wears a crown on his head, which is the crucified Christ with his thorns. And so, there's a new type of king, brothers and sisters, not a worldly king, but there's a new king that really exists, and he is in our hearts. You are the temple of God. Within your body, your body is simply the house, and within that house, there lies a throne. And on that throne, there is Christ the King. The kingdom of God. What is this kingdom? Satan is called the prince of this world by John in his gospel. There is a prince of this world that is luring people on. We see all the time, brothers and sisters, people consuming, consuming, consuming goods, money, uh, houses, uh, consuming all kinds of goods, cars, um, spending on themselves all the time, consuming, driven by the prince of this world. And aside from this prince of the world, there is this king of God's heavenly kingdom who rules our hearts and minds. He and his word and his kingdom and his father and the saints, they are different. They are rejected, but there is something very deep about them. They have found true happiness. Very strange. Very, very strange. Popularity in the kingdom of Satan is delineated for us in the three temptations. <clears throat> we see that in chapter 6 of Luke where he talks about those three terrible temptations to use his power to change stones into bread because he's hungry but he will not use it for himself. He never uses his miraculous powers for himself, this Jesus. He hangs on the cross. He's told, come down from the cross. He refuses to come down from the cross. He's hungry. He will not use his powers to feed himself. He's thirsty, I thirst. He will not seek out wine or water to drink, but rather he cries out. The second temptation, to look over the world and to be in possession of the whole world. Covetousness, never having enough. Ah, but for those who are in the world and worldly people, covetousness is not at all a question that is asked or spoken of. <clears throat> and pride, spiritual pride, to be considered a great spiritual man, throw yourself down from the pinnacle. It never ends, brothers and sisters. And the key to it all is this. 
that we are willing to sacrifice ourselves for others. We never ever turn in on ourselves. And we hear in Isaiah chapter 9, a child is born to us, a son is given over to us, and he is grieved. He shoulders the sins of the world. He is wonderful. He is a counselor, the God Almighty, the Father of the world and the King and Prince of the world, the Prince of Peace. His empire shall be multiplied and there shall be no end of peace when he comes. His way, this strange one, is to suffer and to teach us how to suffer. We suffer on behalf of other people. We suffer when people disagree with the truth of Christ. We suffer when we see the poor are forgotten. We cry out to the Lord. And Jesus came into the world, brothers and sisters, and he sends something very strange. Usually the message is this, blessed are the rich, blessed are the powerful, blessed are the great, blessed are those who laugh now. But the Lord says the opposite, not blessed are the rich, but blessed are the poor. He doesn't say, blessed are those who are filled with food. But rather he says, blessed are the hungry. He doesn't say, blessed are the strong and blessed are the joyful. But blessed are those who weep. Blessed are you when men hate you not when people love you and you're popular, but blessed are you when men hate you. Blessed are you when men curse you. Blessed are you when men reject you. Rejoice and be glad, for great is the joy that awaits you in God's heavenly kingdom. And then he doesn't say love your friends. Love your enemies. Love those who hate you and reject you. What a strange man, brothers and sisters. And so here it is. We begin to see the building of the kingdom. Young people working with drug, drug addicts, with strangers, not their friends, with those who are poor in spirit and poor. There they are. The kingdom of God has begun. And so we rejoice. The king is coming. Those who have lived according to his ways. He's coming, the beloved of the soul. Remember this, brothers and sisters, that your bride, you're the bride, he is your husband. But no one else can be your husband or the husband of your soul except Jesus Christ. We find in, in the call of the rich man, the rich young man, the call that echoes in his heart. <clears throat> he wants very, very much to find happiness. And he asks the question, how shall I gain eternal life? What must I do? He asks Jesus. 
Jesus says, come and follow me. Come and follow me. He invites him to be with him, to live with him, to work with him, to hear his wisdom, all that he will give. There is a lack of fulfillment in this young man's heart. He has obeyed every single commandment of God. He's a righteous man. <clears throat> he has not killed, he has not stolen, uh, he has not committed adultery, he has not done any of these things. One thing is missing, says the Lord, if you really seek eternal life. Leave everything and come and follow me. And the rich young man went away sad. There is this lack of fulfillment, brothers and sisters, in the lives of all of us, in the depths of our souls, far beyond anything that can satisfy you here on earth. There is that yearning for that goal that we find very obscure. We don't know what it is, whether you be Christian or not. It doesn't satisfy you. There's something that you want, something that you desire. You desire finally to pour out everything that's in you, everything that's in you, every bit of energy, every bit of intelligence, you want to pour it out and you want to pour it out and make meaning for other people and make meaning for yourself. And this cannot be done by any person except those who follow Christ. <clears throat> there is something that is incomplete about our lives here on earth. It's not something that we can escape because it's true. Nothing here on earth can satisfy us. There's lack of fulfillment, no matter how successful we are in our business, no matter how happy we are with our families, there is still something incomplete. We are creatures and he is the creator. We are servants. He is the king. There is a weakness in human nature that we inherited from Adam and Eve. We disobeyed the Lord. And we have inherited from our parents that disobedience. This disobedience makes us limited in our connection with the Lord. The, the soul cries out for the Lord, yearns for the Lord, like a watchman looking for daybreak. There is something that is not right or something that's incomplete. It's the state of being here on earth. We want the Lord. This body is not enough. And what I can get here on earth is not quite enough. Let me be free, Lord. Good teacher, what shall I do to gain eternal life? You know the commandments and you try to follow the commandments. And yet that's not sufficient. You want to be consumed finally by God. And only in love can that be done. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole strength. Love him completely and totally. And also love your neighbor as you love yourself. <clears throat> it's a complex, union between those two commandments 
Because in loving God, you want to pour yourself out for God. And in pouring yourself out for God, you love your neighbor. And all of us brothers and sisters do not love sufficiently. None of us love sufficiently. When we love as God loves, we love our enemies. When we love as God loves, we allow ourselves to suffer and be sacrificed on the altar of God. When we love as God loves, Jesus lays out upon this altar, brothers and sisters. This is the beauty about the Catholic Church. Christ lays out on the altar his body and his blood, totally and completely helpless and totally defenseless. He gives his body and blood to us. No matter what we do with this body and blood that he gives to us, he gives himself to us. Total abandonment is something that we fear. We don't quite trust the Lord enough. Amen? Amen? You've got a king. You've got a way of life. You've got Christ. You've got the word of God. And you have the promise of eternal life. What else do you want, brothers and sisters? And this now is what can bring you joy even while you live through this valley of tears. Right here on earth, you know and you have been promised, it's been told to you, that when you die, you will die in Christ. When you rise, you will rise in? Rise. Let me hear you loud. Rise. You're going to rise in Christ. You're going to a heavenly home. That has been promised to you. Are you all sinners? Yes. Is that a big problem with Jesus? No. There is nothing that you can do that he will not forgive. So you fall. So you rise. Okay? You brush yourself off and you start all over again. And that will be until the day you die. And then he welcomes you into his kingdom. Faithfulness to the mission of Jesus. We're all imperfect. We're all imperfect brothers and sisters. All of us are weak and sinners. We have pride, we're covetous. Uh, there's lust in our bodies, so forth and so on. But we keep on going and if we fall, we rise, we brush ourselves off, and we start all over again. Amen? Amen? That's the way it is, the journey through life. And it takes a lot of humility to keep saying, I'm sorry. And when you enter into the heavenly kingdom, what will you see? You will be with your beloved God. You will see him face to face, then you will see him, then you will know him. And as John describes it, you will knock on the door, he will open the door. Isn't that beautiful? You have won the victory. What a beautiful matter. And there will be a river flowing in the middle of the new Jerusalem and fruit trees on both sides and songs of angels and joy. There will be no darkness anymore. There will be no pain anymore, no anxiety, no worry, no fears. And you will live forever with the Lord. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reward for what we do here on earth. He is forever. God is forever. You see, brothers and sisters, finally, 
you yourselves know what is holiness. Amen? You know what is holiness. You know when you have not given in to your appetites. You know when you have given away rather than received. You know very well when you have poured yourself out. Amen? Um, and so it is that the brothers, I founded the, brother, the Brotherhood, and this would have been 35 years ago, uh, working with the homeless and dest the destitutes, the, the, the poor, the little kids, the blind, the deaf, the hungry, all those that you see enumerated by the Lord in the Beatitudes. And what a joy it has been. And the, the ministry has brought forth some 500 brothers, 550 brothers. Uh, we have a sisterhood, um, and that's our life. Uh, just giving, giving, giving all the time on the vows. And you know, we do it, and sometimes it's very heavy and difficult, but then, then we turn to the cross of Jesus Christ. You love him? Yes. How much do you love him? A lot? Yes. With everything you are? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Let me hear you give Jesus a very big hand. Yes. 